Welcome into the Pat O'Hara Show. I'm Carson Engel filling in this week for Sean McDowell. We're here in the locker room as we are every week. This locker room important this week, especially after the Predators sowed the seeds for victory here last week and pulled off a great win over the Alabama Vipers. 45 to 34, but the Predators going back to action this week to get ready for the playoff push, which will start Saturday night against the Milwaukee Iron. A lot to get to Coach O'Hara about. Let's talk to him now. Here is the coach, Pat O'Hara. Well, Coach, welcome in again. You know, you get out of the jungle with a great win against the Alabama Vipers, 45-34. How fortunate do you feel to, to earn such a hard-fought victory in the fashion which you guys did? It was a huge game, Carson. Uh, you know, it's a division game, playoff implications. Uh, you know, a very good Alabama team, very tough team that has found a way to win games any way they can. And, and they certainly gave us a scare at the end, but we're certainly fortunate to come away with a win. It was good to win at home. You know, our, our fans needed that. Let's go into the highlights here. First quarter action. Right off the bat, the Predators are going to receive. Josh Bush gets the football. And uh-oh, it's a fumble for Bush. First play, and the ball will turn over to the Vipers. Backup quarterback Tim Hicks comes in starting his first game of the year, and he hits a target that he will become very familiar with throughout the night in C.J. Johnson. One play, one score, 22 yards, 7 to nothing, Alabama. Nick Hill, though, strikes right back, and a 23-yard scamper by the quarterback sets up this 13-yard strike to Robert Caroga. We're knotted at 7. Coach, an early touchdown from Robert. I mean, this is a guy who's had, in his last three games, five touchdowns early. What makes him successful early? Why is he kind of the guy that always gets things started for your offense when he's in there? It goes all the way back to training camp. You know, Robert's a guy that came from day one, never says anything, quiet guy, puts his hard hat on and comes to work every day and works hard. And he has a real good familiarity with Nick. And, and Nick has a lot of confidence in him. And, and Robert's really, really stepped on here as the season's progressed. Picking up the action still early in the first. Vipers already in bad field position, and Johnny Bayless rushes in to record the first of many big plays on the quarterback, picking up the sack and forcing the fumble. Paul Griffin recovers, and the Preds are in business. Hill continues his sharp play, and on first down, Bobby Scipio finds himself on the other end of the pass for a 12-yard TD, 14-7 Predators. Vipers going to work the clock now. They tick 5-17 off in a long drive that finishes off with this goal line carry by Dan Alexander. Penalty waved off, 14 all at this point. Coach, when a team's able to tick off so much time, it's a little different in arena football. I mean, that must be very significant in the way you're going to try to strategize for things, you know, difficult in a, in a short field to, to tick off so much time. But they did that a couple times throughout the night. Yeah, it's, uh, arena football is a crazy game. You know, we started the, started the game fumbling the kickoff, and they had a quick score. Uh, and then we got the ball back. We had a very quick score. And then we had another quick score, and then another quick score. I, mean, I think we had eight plays in the first half of offense, and, and we're scoring at will. Uh, so, yeah, it's a little, little different. Our defense got a little bit tired out there, but they played very well. All right, back to the end of the first quarter now. Hill won't let up in this quarter, completing another first down touchdown connection, this time going to T.T. Tolliver. And final play of the first, Tim Hicks will be sacked for the second time in this quarter. Mark Robinson filling in for the injured E.J. Bird is the culprit this time. And at the end of one, it's 21-14 Orlando. Coach, Mark Robinson, talk about a guy who's filled in some games but hasn't really always gotten the playing time. I know E.J. Bird's kind of worked a lot with him, a uh, pretty natural athlete. Just talk about Robinson. Mark's a tremendous athlete, like you said, Carson. He played in, in another indoor league last year. I think he had 17, 18, 19 sacks. And so uh, he's got a motor. You know, he's, he's very quick off the ball. And there's been a little bit of a learning curve there. I think one of the biggest contributions E.J. Bird has made to our team, other than being able to play, was, was really kind of teaching Mark uh, by example uh, of how to rush that edge and how to run it tight and to hug it tight. And I think it paid off the other night. And your quarterback, Nick Hill, how do you feel when a, your quarterback gets off to such a hot start, three touchdowns there in that first quarter? He really threw some strikes there in that first quarter. Uh, you know, our challenge is to continue to do that for yeah. four quarters. Uh, but the first quarter, he really threw some, some great balls. And, We've got to uh, get that consistency that we've been talking about all season, though, to be able to finish games out and stay consistent in our passing game and, and pitch and catch. Well, let's head into the second quarter highlights now. Starting out this quarter, Alabama is still on offense. A fourth down field goal opportunity is missed by Brian Jackson. And here comes Josh Bush going the length of the field. The Preds up by two scores. Here comes sack number three on the night. 
Big number 95, Arian Dixon, will bring down Hicks for a four-yard loss, and the Vipers eventually turn over on downs. Preds will kick a field goal on their next possession, and at the end of the half, Hicks puts the capper on what was a shaky 30 minutes for the quarterback with the interception by Rayshon Kaiser, number 10, on the year for the ball hawk at the half, 31-14, red and black. Josh Bush brings that kick back, uh, that missed field goal. I mean, talk about the level of excitement he brings to your team and just what that does for your team overall. Josh is really a weapon, returning that ball off the net and those missed field goals. I mean, he is a true offensive weapon. We don't use him as much offensively. He's our fourth receiver and our fourth defensive back, which ended up we had to use him. Uh, very dynamic guy, and so whenever he's able to touch the ball in, the, in special teams, it's, it's always a, a chance for a big play. So the halftime score, 31-14, and we head in to the second half and the highlights. Alabama will start off this second half much like the first. Ferocious sack on second down by Frisner Nelson, and then father time comes striking. Kenny McIntyre intercepts the football, and the Preds take over. After a field goal missed by Orlando, Alabama will get their first score since midway in the first. Here midway in the third, a touchdown by Michael Johnson, but the point after is missed, so it's 31-20 Predators. Caroga will catch three passes on this next drive, but the last one is sweetest, a 19-yard touchdown grab, 38-20 Predators in front after three. Fourth quarter highlights, Alabama's driving, and Kenny McIntyre says, give me one more interception. Hicks is third of the game. This tandem of Rayshon Kaiser, Kenny McIntyre, 